Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Friday, April 27th, 2012. Our top story comes from the field of nanotechnology. MIT researchers have created copper-gold nanoparticles with some interesting environmental applications. You see, copper can actually be a catalyst for an electrochemical reaction, converting CO2 into hydrocarbons. However, such a reaction generally requires a lot of energy and the copper electrodes corrode easily, making the reaction impractical. Which is where gold comes in, as it is known to be very resistant to corrosion and has been mixed with copper in the past. Once making the particle, they tested them by coating electrodes with them and placing it in a beaker. Voltage was run through the electrode and CO2 bubbled through the solution in the beaker. These hybrid nanoparticles are certainly better than pure copper, likely from the composition and additional surface area. The question remains whether it's cost-effective coating industrial electrodes with gold, but given it's to convert CO2 into additional fuel, that just might be the case. Next, we have a very quick update from the world of technology. DARPA recently signed a contract with a company, Innovega, for making augmented reality glasses. Now, these are quite different from similar technology you may have seen because special contact lenses are part of the device. Current heads-up devices are very big and bulky, but that's where these contacts come in. They're made from a special nanomaterial, allowing the eye to focus on both the environment and the display. This allows for better integration of the surroundings and overlaid image projected onto the glasses. Obviously, this would be extremely useful for military applications, but there are plenty of commercial applications as well. We end with a story from the world of chemistry. Swedish researchers from the Royal Institute of Technology engineered a molecular catalyzer as fast as photosynthesis. The molecular catalyzer oxidizes water into oxygen, and the finding is predicted to have an impact on the use of renewable energy sources. Photosynthesis cycles in nature happen at a rate of 100 to 400 per second. Over the 30 years of research in artificial photosynthesis, this is the first time that a speed comparable to those of plant cells are reached. The researchers, in fact, broke the artificial record at 300 cycles per second. This achievement opens the possibility to create large-scale facilities for the production of alternative sources of energy, such as hydrogen in regions with lots of sunlight, like Sahara, or it will be possible to combine it with solar cells to increase its efficiency. The Swedish research leader believes that 10 years will be enough to implement this advancement into competitive technologies to carbon-based fuels. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description. Especially this episode because there's info about the HIV Research Charity Blog TV happening tomorrow.